Ever wonder why some people seem at ease and confident in relationships while others overthink everything? Or when things get a little serious, they pull away? That's because we all play different roles in relationships depending on our attachment style. And today we'll explore some of these roles with the help of four imaginary friends. First, meet Secure Sally. She's calm. She listens with empathy. She's the rock in the relationship. She's very steady. She's also independent and allows her partner to be independent, while at the same time, she's emotionally attuned and affectionate. Sally's respectful of her partner's hobbies and need for space. She's emotionally balanced. She hardly ever takes things personally. She's very comfortable being in a relationship. She's very reliable and she's tolerant and dependable. Then meet anxious Alex who constantly needs reassurance and he's worried that he will be abandoned. He overanalyzes everything. When he texts his partner, he constantly checks his phone, waiting impatiently for a response. He's overly eager to please. When he can't immediately hear from his partner, when he calls or when he texts, Alex panics and always thinks the worst. Alex doubts himself constantly, doesn't think he's good enough, and worries that his partner will soon find someone better and leave him. He can be clingy and demanding, preoccupied with the relationship, and desperate for attention and affection. And then there is avoidant Adam. He's the independent one who values his space and independence way more than closeness. He keeps things just surface level, looks uncomfortable with affection, public display of emotion or affection. And when things get serious, Adam finds a way out, withdraws or shuts down emotionally. Adam, Adam doesn't want to depend on others and he doesn't want others to depend on him. And he doesn't really need social reassurance. So he's not looking for validation. Adam likes to sulk though and complains when he's not getting his needs met or his wants. But he's not very good at talking about them. He hates asking for help. He's not very good explaining his emotions. And he hates surprises, hates being out of control in unpredictable situations. Finally, meet fearful Fred the disorganized. He's constantly torn between wanting intimacy and fearing it. And he's unpredictable in relationships fluctuates between being overly excited and suddenly pulling back, constantly sending mixed signals. Fred wants to be in a relationship, but he hates being dependent on other people and he is afraid of being in a relationship because he's afraid of getting hurt. He also doesn't trust the people he loves with his feelings. So he is not at ease intelligently discussing how he feels. So how did these folks, these four characters become so different, you ask? Well, Secure Sally had responsive and loving parents who encouraged her to explore on her own. They paid attention to her and were always there for her when she needed them. Her parents were not perfect by any means, but they were predictable and reliable with their love, affection, and care. They were warm and nurturing. 
They were attuned to her needs and wants and focused on who she is as a person rather than what she can do and her achievements. While anxious Alex had very inconsistent caregivers. Sometimes they gave him care and love. Other times they might have been neglectful in a moment of need or even punished him for wanting or needing something. So Alex felt loved when he got the attention and affection and he felt confused when he didn't. On top of that, his caretakers seemed to prioritize their own needs and wants instead of his and even leaned on him emotionally a little bit. So Alex learned to be clingy to increase his feelings of security. He also learned to throw tantrums and get attention and closeness that way. He was afraid to let go of his parents and didn't want to explore on his own because when he tried, sometimes he'd look back and his mom or caregiver wouldn't be there and so he would feel afraid. Then avoidant Adam. He had parents who mostly didn't meet his needs or didn't meet them in the way he wanted them. Imagine him running to mom for a hug and comfort, but all she gave him was an acknowledgement and something like, you're a big boy. It's better than nothing, I suppose, but it's not exactly what he was looking for. She might have been discouraging of his or invalidating of his emotions, saying stuff like, Boys don't cry. At the same time, his parents might have been more rewarding of his achievements and his actions. So Adam learned that emotions probably won't get him what he needs, but showing up with an excellent scorecard from school will definitely get him what he needs. So he became focused on achieving things rather than expressing himself. Then, fearful Fred, the disorganized. He probably had parents and caregivers who repeatedly did not meet his needs, especially when he showed signs of distress. His caregiver might have even been abusive and scary to be around. He might have um, been punished frequently instead of shown care and soothing. So if he was crying and sad instead of his caregivers giving him a hug and love and soothing, they would tell him to shut up or go into his room or neglect him. Ultimately, Fred became confused about his parents fearing them and needing them at the same time. You can see how different relationships will be very different with these different characters. So, which one do you think you are? Comment below if you know what attachment style do you have. Maybe you did some therapy, so you know that. And how did it feel for you to be in a relationship if you have been in a relationship with one of these attachment styles? Also, like this video, subscribe to get more, and let's continue. We all want to be with someone like Secure Sally, who is actually the ideal partner. But Secure Attachment Style is not the majority of people out there. So we're more likely to meet avoidance or anxious or disorganized attachment style individuals. But at the same time, wouldn't it be nice if we were the securely attached person, the ideal partner? The good news is that we absolutely can. 
we can all learn to regulate our emotions, learn about our emotions, address our fears. We can learn to communicate better, to be comfortable around other people who are emotional, to be reassuring. We can learn to be confident. So your attachment style is not a life sentence, especially if you don't want it to be. I'll give you something today to help you out. If you are like anxious Alex, when you text your partner and they don't respond immediately, think of what you could do to change your focus so you're not staring at your phone constantly counting the seconds anxiously. Instead of thinking of the worst, think that maybe they're in a meeting or taking a nap. There are so many reasons why someone would not be responding immediately. I, for one, keep my phone on silent. So sometimes it takes me hours to realize somebody texts that are cold. If you are avoidant Adam, instead of sulking and complaining when you need something, remember that no one can read your mind. And if you let them interpret your sulking, they probably get it wrong. So just tell them what you want. Even if you think you'll sound clumsy, practice makes everything better. And if you feel like running away because things are getting a little too serious or too emotional, don't go too far. You might regret it later. So just ask for a moment alone or a day alone or just go in the garage and tinker with your car for a while. Just don't pack your bags and slam the door on the way out. If you are fearful, Frank, learn to be aware of what triggers you and recognize when you're triggered. What emotions happen when you're triggered? Some people get angry. Some people get fearful. Who are you and how do you react when you're triggered? What triggers you? It just means you are reacting to a situation. So learn better ways to react to the situation. Like learn how to calm yourself down, how to soothe yourself and instead of assuming that your partner is out to get you or hurt you or worse, leave you, remind yourself that they love you and will likely never do that. If you're not sure, simply ask them if they really meant to upset you. You'll find out how frequently you misunderstand what is happening and overreacting and slowly learn to trust them and Trust yourself to be better. That being said, some behaviors in relationships are indeed toxic. So we all need to know the difference. For that, I have a video on toxic relationships up there. Go watch that next if you like. I'll also put it in the description down below and at the end of this video. Press the thumbs up button if you liked what you heard today. Subscribe to the channel and share this video if you know someone who should watch it. Thank you. See you next time.